We have seen that hydrohalogenation of alkenes occur via Markovnikov's orientation, so that positive part of the reagent, which is proton in case of HX, adds to the less substituted carbon to form more stable carbocation intermediate, which is then captured by the negative part, a halide ion in case of HX, to form the alkyl halide. In the end, H is attached to less substituted carbon, whereas X is attached to more substituted carbon. To their surprise and luck, M.S. Karash and F.W. Mayo. In 1933, found that some additions of HBr, but not HCl or HI, to alkenes, gave products that were opposite to those expected from Markovnikov's rule. They were baffled by the change in regioselectivity of HBr addition. Later, it was found that these anti-Markovnikov reactions were most likely occurring when the reagents or solvents came from old supplies that had accumulated peroxides from exposure to the air. Peroxides give rise to free radicals that initiate the addition, causing it to occur by a radical mechanism which produces anti-Markovnikov's regioselectivity. The oxygen-oxygen bond in peroxides is rather weak, so it can break with slight input of energy, be it in the form of heat or light, to give two alkoxy radicals. Let's consider the individual steps. In the initiation step, free radicals generated from the peroxide react with HBr to form bromine radicals. The bromine radical lacks an octet of electrons in its valence shell, making it electron deficient and electrophilic. It adds to a double bond, forming a new free radical with the odd electron on a carbon atom, that is, generating a carbon radical. This free carbon radical reacts with an HBr molecule to form a bond and generate another bromine radical. The regenerated bromine radical reacts with another molecule of the alkene, continuing the chain reaction. These are called chain propagation steps. Both of the propagation steps are moderately exothermic, allowing them to proceed faster than the termination steps. Note that each propagation step starts with one free radical and ends with another free radical. Therefore, number of free radicals remains constant until the reactants are consumed, so that free radicals have no other option than to come together and terminate the chain reaction. Notice that bromine radical is the electron-deficient electrophile which adds to the alkene in this peroxide-mediated radical mechanism. Compared to H-positive, or we say proton, which serves as electrophile in absence of peroxide. Let us check why anti-Markovnikov's orientation is observed in the presence of peroxide. We have seen that, in the presence of peroxides, bromine radical is the electrophile that adds to alkene. Therefore, just like H-positive electrophile, it has two paths to add to alkene. Path 1 is, when the bromine radical add to more substituted end of carbon-carbon double bond, which generates the radical carbon on less substituted end. This is of course, a secondary radical. Path 2 is, when the bromine radical adds to the less substituted end of the carbon-carbon double bond, which obviously generates the radical carbon on more substituted end. This is a tertiary radical. We know that tertiary radical is more stable than secondary radical, therefore bromine radical will add to carbon-carbon double bond, preferably through path second, to form the more stable tertiary radical. This will then abstract a hydrogen radical from HBr to form secondary alkyl halide as product. One must understand that both mechanisms for the addition of HBr to an alkene, with and without peroxides, 
follow our extended statement of Markovnikov's rule, in both cases, the electrophile adds to the less substituted end of the double bond, to give the more stable intermediate, either a carbocation, in absence of peroxide, or a free radical, in the presence of peroxide. In the ionic reaction, the electrophile is H positive. In the peroxide catalyzed free radical reaction, the electrophile is bromine radical. What is meant here is that, in peroxide mediated HBr addition to alkene, the addition doesn't violate the Markovnikov's rule. Only the regiochemistry of the product formed is opposite to that in absence of peroxide. Therefore, there is nothing like anti Markovnikov's rule. Only the anti-Markovnikov's orientation obtained in the presence of peroxide. You may wonder why the reaction with Markovnikov orientation does not take place in the presence of peroxides together with the free radical chain reaction. It actually does take place, but the peroxide catalyzed reaction is faster. If a tiny amount of peroxide is used, a mixture of Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov products results. However, if an appreciable amount of peroxide is used, the radical chain reaction is so much faster than the uncatalyzed ionic reaction that only the anti-Markovnikov product is observed. The reversal of orientation in the presence of peroxides is called the peroxide effect. It occurs only with the addition of HBr to alkenes. The peroxide effect is not seen with HCl because the reaction of an alkyl radical with HCl is strongly endothermic. Similarly, the peroxide effect is not observed with HI because the reaction of an iodine atom with an alkene is strongly endothermic. Only HBr has just the right reactivity for each step of the free radical chain reaction to take place and show anti-Markovnikov's orientation.